Okay, so let's discuss this whole Hermes game theory. Hi guys, my name is GPS and welcome back to my channel. I asked you guys on my YouTube community page about a month ago to leave any unpopular Hermes opinions that you might have or some that are floating around out there and you've heard of. And I promise you guys that I'll be reacting to them, so that's exactly what we'll be doing today. And before we get into the video, I want to say a big thank you to every single one of you who contributed and left comments. All of them are so incredibly interesting. Some of them are quite juicy and very highly unpopular, but I really appreciate every single one. So if you want to find out what people think about Hermes and my reaction to those thoughts, then please keep on watching. So I have all the unpopular opinions pulled up on my computer right next to me. So in case I'm looking down, I'm looking at your unpopular opinions. And in case you want to participate in future videos, you want to leave me your thoughts and feedback on certain videos, then please make sure that you are subscribed because I do try to post as much as I can on the YouTube community feed, which you have access to. I think even if you're not subscribed, but if you're subscribed, they immediately pop up on your YouTube feed. So in case you want to stay in the know in terms of what's going on in my channel and Hermes in general, then please make sure you subscribe and check out my YouTube community page. But without further ado, let's look at these unpopular opinions. So the first one, oh and by the way, if you're annoyed by choppy reading, you'll be really annoyed by me because I'm dyslexic. So I make sure to leave all the unpopular opinions here on the screen with the person's name who posted them. So the first one came from John Lee. And the very first one is that the Evelyn is actually overdone. Now, I completely agree with this. I did a recent video on reacting to pretty much every single Hermes bag in their portfolio, at least the ones that they sell online. And I did say in that video that I think the Evelyn is extremely overrated. I don't have a personal issue with it. I think you could definitely do worse than buy an Evelyn bag. I don't hate the bag. I don't have a personal issue with it. However, I do find that it's quite expensive for what you get, and I think you could definitely do much better with over $3,000 at RMS. But I got a lot of feedback and a lot of comments on that video saying that the Evelyn is the perfect bag for moms in case you want your hands free and you want a bag that's really easy to use, which I can absolutely see. So I do think that the Evelyn is overdone. I don't think it's a terrible bag or the worst bag that you can pick up from Hermes. I think by now most of you know which bag is my least favorite from Hermes. It's not the Evelyn, but it's just not something that I would spend over $3,000 on. John also left a couple more unpopular opinions. The next one is that the Gypsy A doesn't get enough exposure. I completely agree. I think the Gypsy A is an incredible bag, but I do think that the biggest barrier with the Gypsy A and why most people would opt for the Evelyn or for another bag is simply the price. The Gypsy A costs nearly $9,000 if you pick it up from the boutique. Although it's a bag that you could probably get from the pre-loved market at a, at a much better price because Hermes bags, other than the Holy Trinity of Hermes bags, Birkin, Kelly and Constance, most Hermes bags tend to be sold at a more reasonable price on the pre-loved market. So you always have that option. But I love the Gypsy A and if you want to hear my more in-depth review of that, I'll make sure to link a video up here where I talk about it. The next one is the Constance needs a removable adjustable strap. I don't think it needs a removable strap. I don't think it would ever come with a removable strap because if you want to go more for the clutch bag or pouch bag look, you obviously have the option to pick up the Constance wallet, which is actually quite a spacious wallet that I have many, many, many videos on. Adjustable maybe. I think the biggest downside to the Constance and why a lot of people tend to opt for a different bag, perhaps a mini Kelly or another bag, um, and not the Constance, is the shoulder strap. The shoulder strap on the Constance is quite short. Depending on how tall you are, you might not be able to put it crossbody at all. For some, on some people it looks great, especially if you're more petite or you're narrow shouldered, you can absolutely wear it comfortably as a crossbody bag. For me, when every time I try a Constance 18, it's definitely more comfortable than a Constance 24. I could never make a Constance 24 work as a crossbody bag. The 18 is a little bit better. So I do wish they came with different length, but uh, if you guys watched my 2020 wishlist video, you guys might know that I'm after a Constance 18 at the moment. I have no idea when I'm going to be able to get it with um, 
everything going on and due to the fact that I have very specific requests. But as soon as I do, you guys will obviously be the first to know. And um, a couple of years ago, I remembered that it was an option for you to take your Constance bag into the store and have it shipped to Paris. And allegedly in Paris, they were able to lengthen the strap on your Constance. They would essentially cut off the original strap and put a longer strap on it, which is something, which is a service that you had to pay for. I'm not sure if that's something that is still being offered by Hermes because they have changed a lot of their policies in the recent past, especially now with everything going on in the world. I'm not sure if they have the time and the capacity when they're catching up on seasonal things to do these kind of services. But as soon as I have my constants, I'll be sure to go into Hermes and ask them about this service because it's probably something that I would like to take advantage of at some point. So I don't think removable is needed for the constants, but I think adjustable would definitely be a good way to go. Or maybe if it wasn't adjustable on the bag itself, perhaps if they came in different length, maybe that would be a good idea. I know it would be logistically a nightmare, but yeah, with the adjustable strap, I definitely do agree. The next opinion is that Kelly 40s need to be more available. I disagree with this. I don't think that most people would want to carry a Kelly or a Birkin 40. And this is coming from someone who used to collect Birkin 40s and who had several Birkin 40s. I don't think that most people need bags that big, especially on a daily basis. I know a lot of people go for them for traveling, but I don't think that they're even practical for traveling because they are so incredibly heavy. Obviously with the Kelly, at least you get a shoulder strap, or with the Birkin, you don't even get a shoulder strap and you have to carry it around the airport. It's so heavy, you want to be careful with it. You want to keep it in its dust bag when you're traveling because um, if you're ever forced to put it under your seat, you don't know what's hiding underneath your seat. You don't want to put an over, what, $15,000 bag underneath your seat without any protection. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Birkin 40s or the Kelly 40s in this case, so I don't think they need to be more widely available. And we have two more uh, comments from John. One of them is that tricolor rodeos are ugly. Now you guys know my thoughts on rodeos. I have plenty of videos on my rodeo collection. In case you haven't seen them, I'll make sure to link them up here. And while I don't think that tricolor rodeos are ugly per se, I definitely prefer the solid colored ones. And um, I think that's all I'm going to say because we do have quite a few more comments on rodeos. Yeah, I prefer solid color rodeos. Tricolor rodeos, in my opinion, are a little bit childish and a little bit juvenile. I'm not a fan of the look. And then the last one that John left is, last but not least, I actually agree that you should have a buy your history before you get offered a Birkin, Kelly, or Constance level bag, unless you specifically ask for an exotic skin piece and buy it. If you're willing to buy exotic skins, you're for sure gonna be coming back for more. So obviously there are two parts to this statement. The first part is that you should have uh, a purchase history before you get offered a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance. And I think it's really important to address in this video that I've been hearing a lot about this Hermes game that they play. And um, I don't necessarily agree with this. I don't think Hermes as a company as a whole plays games. There are certainly people working for the brand who are a little bit more naughty, but I don't think that Hermes as a brand tries to play games. And I think the easiest way to identify and justify who these highly coveted bags go to is to have a purchase history. So I do agree that you need to have some sort of purchase history and some sort of relationship with the brand in order to score Birkin, a Kelly, or even a Constance. And then the second part of the statement is that you should be able to walk into a store and be offered an exotic bag because if you're willing to spend on an exotic bag, it's very likely that you'll go back to the store, which I personally disagree with. I have plenty of friends who love Hermes bags but would never buy anything else from the brand and they would love to just walk into a store get an exotic bag and never look back. So I think you definitely need to have a purchase history in order to get an exotic bag. And I have talked about this before that in my opinion, as well as in my S's opinion, it's much easier for you to get an exotic bag. Actually not easier, it's much faster for you to get an exotic bag with an established profile than it is to get a bag in a regular leather, just purely because of the fact that you're competing with a much smaller group of people than you are if you're trying to buy a bag in a regular leather, which might cost $10,000, which obviously a lot of people are willing to spend on based on how popular Hermes is. 
but the amount of people who are willing to drop fifty thousand dollars on a bag is a much smaller group so it tends to be a little bit of a shorter waiting period for you to get your hands on an exotic bag than it is to get a bag in a regular leather but by all means you need to be an established client with Hermes to be able to get one of those bags meaning that you have a long purchase history you have a relationship with the brand and you most likely have purchased one or two bags that are on your profile in previous seasons so yeah thank you so much for the comments john the next comment is from kevin and it just says forced purchases which i think again refers to this hermes game that people like to play which as i mentioned i don't personally agree with i think you have the option to go into the store ask for a bag you know the rules you know how hermes decides whether you get a bag or not if you don't want to play the game you don't have to you can go to the pre-love market it's really as simple as that but if you think about it, how is Hermes supposed to decide who these bags go to? Obviously, Hermes is very much aware of the fact that their bags are highly popular. A lot of people want them. And Hermes is only able to make so many bags within a year for one reason or another. Obviously, I'm sure they could expand their manufacturing. They have been trying to do that. But they do want to keep everything in-house. They want to train their own craftsmen. So at the moment, they can only make so many bags. So let's say you have 100 people waiting for a bag, but you only have 10 bags to offer. How do you decide in a fair way who those bags go to? Well, I think the easiest way to do that is to look at purchase history, look at relationships that people have built along the way. And um, if you don't want to buy things from Hermes, don't buy them. I don't think anyone is forcing you. If they are, you should definitely talk to the store manager or just not go back to that store because I don't think anyone should be forcing you to buy anything. If you want to get a bag from Hermes, you have to be aware that they are very much in demand. And the only way for Hermes to be able to decide who these bags can go to is to reward their loyal clients. And if you want to become a loyal client, you do have to pick up things here and there, but you're not forced to buy anything. You shouldn't feel obligated. If you don't want to participate in the Hermes game, they're, that's why the pre-love market is booming because there are so many people out there who would much rather just put the money towards a bag than wait for a bag to come around so i can definitely see why people feel this way but you know these forced purchases it's i think people get really upset when it comes to Hermes and when it comes to their bag release policies but if you think about the luxury world in general there are so many other brands who do this who have limited edition pieces or brands that are very much in demand but have very small manufacturing capacities. If you think about luxury cars, there are certain luxury cars that you are unable to buy unless you have a long history with the brand. If you think about watches, let's think about some Patek Philippe watches that are so incredibly hard to come by. And the only way for you to get a watch is to have a long-term relationship with a watch boutique or build a purchase history. That's really the only way for you to get them. And that's watches. When it comes to the fashion industry, the most recent drop from Dior, which was the Air Force Dior sneakers. The only way for you to get those sneakers is either you had to get into a lottery and win a spot to get the sneakers, or you had to put in a request with the person you work with at Dior. They would then send your request to the corporate office and then corporate office would judge based on your purchase history, whether you would justify to be offered a pair of shoes. So Hermes is not the only brand who's doing it, but I do think they get the most sort of hate, I don't know if that's the right word, but a most sort of backlash for that, even though they're not the only brand doing it, but I think they have sort of become known for that. But in general, I don't think that Hermes would force anyone to buy anything and you should not feel obligated to buy anything unless you absolutely love the product that you see. The next one is from Amaya Lynx, who said, my unpopular opinion is that I don't like the Rodeo charms and I think they are overpriced for what they are. Also think Hermes selling practices enable high markups on popular bags by resellers but I've already done a video on this. Would love to hear your thoughts. Well, if Amai has already done a video on this, then I'll make sure to find it and leave it in the info box for you guys so you can go and check it out. But let's start with the rodeos. So I think we have already touched on this and I think there might be another comment about rodeos. I don't think rodeos are overpriced. I don't, th rodeos are not the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to overpriced RMS items. I first think of the Touch collection when it comes to um, overpriced pieces. I think Touch pieces are definitely a little bit overrated. If you don't know what a Touch bag is, it's essentially a bag that only has certain elements made of exotic pieces. And usually those bags 
retail for about double than it would if it didn't have any exotic skin on it. So I'm not the biggest fan of the Touch collection. I don't necessarily think that they're worth the money. I think of maybe exotic fashion jewelry when it comes to overpriced pieces. Rodeos I don't find to be overpriced, but that's just my opinion. Also, I think Hermes selling practices enable high markups on popular bags. Yes, I think I think that's really the case with everything where you have such high demand but really low supply. Mm, yeah, I mean Hermes is fighting the reselling market as much as they can. They definitely have policies in place in order to try to stop resellers from getting access to bags directly from the boutique. But um, yeah, I mean it's just it just comes down to the fact that a lot of people want this bag, but there aren't enough bags for everyone to go around. But a really good example of how Hermes is trying to work on this was when Hermes decided that they are only going to allow customers to pick up two bags each year. And um, the whole reasoning behind that wasn't to limit their long-term clients from getting bags, but it was actually to allow a much larger group of people to get access to these bags and give people the opportunity to get a piece of the Hermes dream, which is obviously the holy trinity of bags. So I think that was a good step in the right direction. They certainly could do more, but um, yeah, I think it's it's just the name of the game when it comes to these super in-demand products. We actually have one more comment on the Rodeo back charms, which came from Moody Kareem that says, Rodeos look like children's toys and destroy the timeless look of a Birkin or Kelly. The same goes for any kind of back charm or twilly. So again, I think it depends on the Rodeo. The ones that are tricolored do sort of remind me of something that you would hang above a baby's crib. They do look very childish and I do think that that's sort of the inspiration behind the rodeos. I think they're meant to be inspired by a bohemian kind of child's room so I don't think that Hermes is not aware of that. I, if I'm not mistaken I think that was an intentional source of inspiration but personally it's not something that I would put in a bag. When it comes to other Hermes back charms you guys know I'm not a fan. They have quite a few different variations of back charms. They have one that looks like a horse head. They have one that is inspired by riding boots. They have one that is inspired by a saddle. But anyway, they do have a huge variety of back charms. I mainly collect their rodeos, but I do have a video on my entire back charm collection from Hermes, or at least the big majority of my back charms that I use on a regular basis. So in case you guys want to see that, I'll link that video up here. And let's quickly really touch on the Twilly comment. Now I have to 100% agree with Moody Karim. I am not the biggest fan of Twillies. I think they're kind of a waste of money. And I know that I'll get a lot of comments and feedback from people saying that it's an absolute necessity. They are needed to protect the handle of your bags. Let me tell you that they are not. Unless you have um, a bag that's pure white, meaning that it's blanc or a baton, a cray, a nata, a grease pearl, or an exotic bag that's white or a lighter color, or maybe a heritage bag, you don't need a twilly to protect the handles. These bags are expensive for a reason. They are created of the finest materials. They're really, really, really well put together. They have, they are created with the consumer in mind. They are not bags that are impractical. You are meant to wear them, enjoy them just the way they are. And I do think that Twillies do kind of cheapen the overall look of a Birkin or a Kelly. They might look nice on, let's say, a herd bag or a garden party or a Dior book tote, a bag that's a little bit more casual. But I personally am not a fan of Twillies on Birkins and Kellys, especially because if you are buying them to protect your bag, by the time anything would happen to your bag, let's say you're someone who's not really careful with your bags and you touch your bags when your hands are covered in hand cream, you touch your bags when your hands are wet or just after you sanitize your hands or for whatever reason you're not careful with your bags. First of all, you'll have much more to worry about than just the handles because if you're careful with your bag, you use them, you know, just like how you would use anything expensive. You would want to take care of them and you'd want to protect them for as long as possible. And by no means I'm saying you need to baby them, but obviously you don't want to reach for a bag when your hands are covered in hand cream. But let's say you're just using your bag in a normal manner. By the time it would come to your bag's handles, this coloring because of the natural sweats and the natural fats on your hands, by the time that happens, you'll have much bigger issues and much bigger things to worry about than just the handles. 
by the time that happens in years, you'll probably want to just kind of refurbish the hardware on your bag. You'll probably want to have the edges repainted. You might want to swap the feet of your bag or repaint the corners and just give your bag an overall facelift. So by the time that happens, you'll probably want to send your bag away to the spa and you might say, okay, that's fair, but it's gonna cost me money to change the handles. Well, it might cost you money to change the handles, but at least you get brand new handles. Whereas with Twilies, you do have to repurchase your Twilies every once in a while, especially if you're so rough with your bag that you can see signs of tear and wear after a year or so. So you'll probably want to repurchase a new Twilly, let's say every six months. Yes, you can dry clean them, but it's made of a very kind of fine silk material. So you can, there are only so many times you can have one of those pieces dry cleaned before it starts fading or kind of losing its shape. So the money that you spend on Twilies over time could have gone towards basically giving your bag an entire facelift. So I don't think Twilies are needed. I don't like the look. If you do, go ahead, enjoy it, love it. It will certainly protect the handles of your bags for a little while. But if you're buying them thinking that they are an absolute necessity to go with your Birkin, don't do that. Save your money and spend it on a spa appointment whenever you think your bag needs to be refurbished or just buy a bag insert because it's going to do much, much, much more for your bag than a Twilly would. Oh, we have another comment about the RMS purchase history. So this came from what Audrey loves and it said, what I hear the most people complaining about is the fact that you need a purchase history to be offered a Birkin, Kelly or Constance. People say it also turns them off that the SA might ask you to purchase other items before they can sell you a bag, possibly to meet the purchase history requirements. It happened to a friend of mine while shopping for a Black Constance 18 at the London airport. I think that is part of the RMS marketing strategy. If it doesn't suit you, there's always a resale market for you to take your pick, with a premium, of course. Looking forward to your upcoming videos as always. Well, thank you what Audrey loves. Um, and I agree with you. I don't think there's anything wrong with the RMS purchase history, as I mentioned. I think it is what it is. This is the way Hermes decides who their bags go to. And I talked about this before, so I don't want to repeat myself, but it's definitely not uncommon in the luxury world. And you know, with essays, it's quite, it's quite a fine line. Because if you ask for a bag, you want, to, you want someone to be transparent with you and you want to learn how you can actually get your hands on a bag. But do you expect your essay to be honest or do you not? If your essay tells you, well, these are the items that you need to purchase in order to meet our purchase history requirements and for me to be able to release a bag to you, then often people call out these essays saying that they are forcing them to buy things and they are unkind or unprofessional or it's not legal to say that from a consumer, uh, per, what is it called, a consumer's protection? They're not compliant with the consumer's protection laws. So you know, they can do no right, I feel like sometimes, because if they tell you what you need to buy, they're like, oh, they're forcing me to buy things. But if they don't, some people say that they're playing games. So I don't know, I personally, do I wish you could just walk into a boutique and buy a bag? Of course I would. But I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I think there are definitely people who take it too far in terms of people who work for the brand. And there are people who are just absolutely lovely. They want to help you out, but their hands are tied as well. So. I overall agree with this statement. And if you ask someone how you can get a bag at the store, if they tell you what they think you should do, you can either you know go with it and take part in this Hermes bag release or Hermes game, as some people like to call it. Or as um, Audrey mentioned as well, you can definitely go to the resale market and buy whatever bag you want whenever you want to buy it. The next comment is from Elena Soroka, who said that the essays are generally rude. Mm, I wouldn't say generally, but if I think of the luxury world in general, I do have to say that probably Hermes is most known for having bad customer service. But I do have to add that I have met the most caring, inspiring, kind, really just caring people through Hermes. And I have also met some people who are a little bit, um, let's say naughty. There are definitely people working for the brand who contribute to this, but in general, I don't think that's the case. If you don't feel welcomed in a boutique or you don't think that you're clicking with the essay that you were offered, just simply go to a different boutique or go back at a later date and see if you could start working with someone else. I know it's not the easiest with Hermes, but um, yeah, I think I can definitely see why you would say that, especially based on your experience. 
And uh, there are certain boutiques around the world that are known to have extremely bad customer service. The boutique on Madison Avenue, the big women's boutique being one of them. But when you go over to the men's side, it's a completely different world. You could get the best customer service if you found someone that you enjoy working with at that store. So I don't think in general they're rude, but unfortunately I think that it is something that they're becoming known for. Although I have to add, can you imagine having to deal with people on a daily basis who are demanding bags from you without even saying hi or without even saying how are you? Because I have definitely witnessed some really, really rude customer interactions. Maybe I should do a video on some Hermes horror stories one day. If you guys would like to see that, then let me know in the comment section down below. The next comment is from Cypher, who always comments on my videos. So thank you so much, Cypher. And the comment says, Epsom on bags, yuck. I feel personally offended by this. No, I'm just kidding. I do, I do love Epsom. You guys know I always talk about Epsom. I find it to be an incredible leather. In my personal opinion, it's quite durable. It's probably the only leather, not the only leather, but it's probably one of the leathers that hides signs of tear and wear the best. Tobo is also one, but I've had to have um, Tobo bags repaired in the past. I've never had to get anything in Epsom repaired, although touch wood, let's hope it remains like that. But I do love Epsom bags. One of my favorite bags in Epsom is my Mini Kelly. I must admit, I'm not the biggest fan of a Birkin in Epsom, but a Kelly in Epsom, perfection. We have a few more unpopular opinions to go through. And the next one is from Clarina, who said that only rare Birkins, Kellys, and Constances are a great investment. Of course, after taking into consideration of its condition and whether it is in a complete set, box, dust bag, paperwork, etc., or not. Um, I don't know, I think this is going to be quite controversial, but there is this one study that people constantly reference. Um, about the Birkin where they compared the price of the Birkin back to gold and looked at how it increased over time. I don't look at a Birkin or a Kelly as a financial investment. I look at it as an investment into my wardrobe because I know if I buy a Birkin or Kelly or a Constance, I'm never going to have to buy essentially another bag in a similar shape, in a similar size, because these bags are timeless. I'm never going, I'm never going to get bored of the shape it's never going to go out of style. So I look at it as more of an investment into my personal wardrobe rather than a financial investment. I think when it comes to selling Birkins and reselling Birkins, Kelly's, Constances, etc., I don't think that they're an investment. You might get lucky if you happen to hit the nail on its head by selling a small bag if small bags are in trend or selling a big bag if they are super trendy. But I think it's really, really difficult to turn this whole reselling thing into a business at this point because the market is so oversaturated with resellers and consignment stores, etc. So I don't look at Birkins and Kelly's and Constance as an, as an investment. Perhaps if you buy a bag that you know is super unique, so like let's say a one, two, three, and away we go Birkin or a Kelly Picnic, not really the smaller one, the smaller one I don't think is as rare as the original big one was. So maybe if you get one of those, perhaps you can look at that as an investment if you never wear it or if you really, really gently try to use it. But um, I don't think that they're a financial investment and this is what you should be spending your money on because you can often lose money on these bags, especially if you consider how much money you have to spend at a boutique to be able to buy one of these bags. You might be able to sell the bag for a little bit of a profit, but you're definitely not going to make all the money back that you had to spend to get that bag directly from the store. The next comment comes from James. Definitely not mine, as I never experienced it myself, but I heard that once offered one of the Trinity bags, obviously Birkin, Kelly, and Constance, some of the essays would kind of insinuate that you purchase something else. I mean, I understand the purchase history, but not when they impose on buying something else after you just purchased a very expensive bag. Again, when my essay offered me a very my very first Birkin, I never felt like I had to buy something else. So, this is quite interesting. I've never heard of anyone being asked to buy something at the same time they get offered the bag. Maybe I could see that being the case if you just walk into a boutique, you ask for a bag, they happen to have the bag, they offer it to you, they might ask you to pick up some other things alongside with it since you don't have a purchase history with that local store. Maybe I could see that being the case. I've never heard of anyone being offered a bag after they have built a relationship with the company, they were offered a bag and then they were asked to buy additional pieces on the spot. So that's quite interesting. I know this is 
kind of the case in Paris. A lot of people talk about going to Paris to get a bag offered to you, which is absolutely not guaranteed. So you should not hold your breath to get a bag in Paris. Obviously, a lot of people have been lucky enough to be offered a bag. But as far as I know, it's getting harder and harder to just walk into the Paris flagship. First of all, get an appointment, walk in and get, then get a bag. But I do know when you go, they not only offer you a bag, if they offer you a bag, but they also offer you things to go alongside with it. So they would offer you twillies, they would offer you a matching wallet, they would offer you, let's say if you ask for a black bag, but they offer you a pink bag, they might offer you a black wallet to go alongside with it, something that would match what you asked for. I don't think that you are forced to buy them. I don't think you're ever forced to buy anything. But um, yeah, that's quite interesting. I've never heard of this. And if that's the case, just don't buy anything else. If you feel like you've spent enough and you've been offered a bag, I don't think you need to buy anything else. And then I think this might be the last one. Let me see. Yes, I think this is going to be the last one, which came from TC, who said they're menswear. I feel like Hermes menswear is just so basic. I know and love Hermes and focused on being trendy, but really, would it kill them to do a few more interesting pieces for men? I see so many interesting design in the women's runways, and I love how they incorporate heritage details into clasp, closure, and, and the like. Also graphics, ex silks, etc. The menswear department needs to step it up. The artistry of the silk matier is astounding. If we could get 10% of that level of design into menswear, it would be great. So obviously you say that you're aware of the fact that Hermes has a very strong and very large clientele who absolutely loves what they do. They love these really understated, under the radar, simple pieces that are of course made of the finest materials. But I do agree with you that Hermes' menswear is really predictable. They pretty much have the exact same pieces every single year. If you follow them for a while, you will know exactly what's coming. They will always have a cashmere and silk blend uh, sweatshirt. They're going to have some shirts with different little added details. Some year it might have a bow, some year that shirt might have a slip in the back. They always have the same turtlenecks with maybe a piece of leather or a different print on one side. It's If you follow Hermes, you'll know exactly what's coming in their menswear collection. And um, I, similar to you, I appreciate the fact that they are not chasing trends. They are not trying to compete with the Louis Vuitton and Supreme collaborations. They are just, you know, they're really old school. And I do wish they were a little bit more innovative when it comes to their menswear, because I also prefer their women's collection. I do have quite a few Hermes ready to wear pieces, but I would say that the majority of my collection is from their equestrian line. You should definitely check out their equestrian line because I think you would be surprised by how fun and a little bit more young those pieces are. They're not very elaborate by any means, but they're really just variable and practical. So I sort of agree with you. Yeah, I wish they were a little bit more innovative. But at the same time, I completely understand where they are coming from and why they're doing what they are doing. And um, each season, there's always a piece, a piece or two that I definitely can stand behind. But yeah, if I see one more pullover hoodie with the pockets on the front made of leather, Hermes, we'll need to have a talk. And this is it, guys. This completes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to your unpopular opinions. And please let me know, do you agree with me? Do you agree with the unpopular opinions? Are there any unpopular opinions that you might have that I didn't touch on? Please make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you would like to participate in future videos like this, then make sure you're subscribed so you get updates from my YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.